I welcome Danos. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his surname. I'm sure you can do that for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Thanos. My surname is Stratkopoulos. I am from Manchester, and uh, today I uh, have the opportunity to present you our uh, open source framework, Tornado VM, which is a, a programming framework that allows programmers to accelerate their Java applications on uh, heterogeneous devices like uh, GPUs, multi-core CPUs, and uh, FPGAs. This is the agenda for uh, today's talk. I will uh, start with a little bit of uh, the motivation of our project. Then I will introduce you the, the insights of uh, Tornado VM. Then highlight uh, a key feature of uh, our system, which is dynamic application reconfiguration. Then some use cases how Tornado VM has been used from applications to extract performance. And uh, finally, the current uh, state and future directions. So let's start with motivation. So why should we care about uh, CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs? And the, the answer to this question is because they are available. So from our system, from uh, small systems like our smartphones, we have uh, ARM multicores with uh, GPUs. So why not uh, utilize them? Why not exploit all the available hardware that we have in the systems? In data centers, we have seen uh, FPGAs recently be de being deployed. In the cloud, uh, they have been starting being available in AWS instances. So starting from a CPU, which is in the left side, we can see a nice lake microarchitecture with uh, eight uh, cores and an integrated GPU. And this uh, microarchitecture can achieve with the GPU, including the GPU, up to one teraflop performance, which is good, but uh, it is indicated for uh, control flow execution, so for branches and for low latency uh, requirements. Well, if uh, the applications they require to, they have a lot of data that uh, can be processed um, in parallel, they could uh, utilize a GPU, which uh, have a high throughput to the memory, and uh, they have available up to 3,000 cores to process data. And lately, it's the FPGA type, which is um, the nice thing with this chip is that it is a programmable, so the same device can be reconfigured and be tailored to the needs that the developer needs. So this is intended for a pipeline parallelism and a low latency, but it comes at the cost of programmability because they are traditionally programmed by a, a hardware description language. So despite all this diversity in the hardware that exists and appears in the right part of the, of the slide, the question is how a programmer can harness this, especially uh, from high level languages like C, C++, even Java. And the answer is by using a programming model because uh, there's the whole magic. The abstraction comes from the programming model. So in this case, uh, there are programming models for uh, heterogeneous systems like uh, OpenCL and CUDA. And uh, these programming models, they abstract the execution in two ways. So they have the principles of uh, the execution model in which the, the processor, the CPU, the GPU, and the FPGA, the accelerators, can be used uh, in an abstract uh, form. So the execution is the following. At first, you copy the data into the memory of your uh, device from the, from the RAM, from the main memory of the system, then you execute, you accelerate the data, and then you copy them out to the main memory. And this way, the CPU, the GPU, and the FPGA, they look alike. They are just accelerators that they process data. So then the question is, okay, we have C++, C++ OpenCL, and CUDA that they can target all the devices available on the systems. But what about uh, managed languages? What about Java, JavaScript, Python? <laughs> what about languages that they have been designed by nature to write once and, and uh, run everywhere? Well, the current uh, uh, frameworks, the current JVMs, they emit code for uh, processors, for, uh, mostly for x86 architecture. Therefore, currently, there is no framework that allows uh, Java transparently to generate dynamic code for uh, any hardware device, like FPGA, GPU integrated, transparently to the user. And this is the main motivation of our work. So we envision a system that uh, will allow transparently these languages to exploit 
uh, all the available hardware on the platform. Let's go and, and have a look on the insides of Tornado VM. So in this slide, I will present you the software stack uh, from, uh, in a top-down order. So let's start with the API. Tornado currently doesn't uh, detect parallelism, so it doesn't know which part can be parallelized. So it relies on the programmer to specify that uh, this method could be ideal for acceleration on a GPU. And this is done by exposing our API. So basically, we, our API is a task-based uh, API. So we have tasks. A task is a representation of uh, a method that could be offloaded on the FPGA or the GPU. And uh, we can have a group of tasks, a group of methods, that uh, they could be uh, offloaded and executed on the hardware in a sequence. So then the task, they are forwarded in the runtime, in which uh, we have uh, an, an optimizer that can optimize the execution. So for example, if we, ha if we have two tasks, and the second task is consuming data that uh, they come from the first task, then this data, they don't need to, co to be copied out of the, the GPU. So in this case, we can optimize the data transfers, and we can uh, save energy. And then the runtime emits uh, our bytecodes, tornado bytecodes, simple bytecodes that orchestrate uh, the execution. The bytecodes are initially executed on the interpreter, and then they are forwarded in the, for lazy compilation into the JIT compiler, which is the GRAL compiler, but it has been extended to, um, to apply specialization for the devices, for the execution on the FPGA or the GPU. So we have different type of specialization according to the device that we target. And this is essential because although OpenCL can be portable across any device, the performance is not portable at all, especially when you want to run code for, that is meant to be for GPUs and you target a uh, hardware like FPGA, which is ideal for pipeline execution. So then the compiler emits a specialized code, and uh, the code is forwarded to the device drivers, where there is the, the compiler, for example, the NVIDIA compiler, or for the FPGAs, it can be a high-level synthesis compiler, that will compile the OpenCL into the final binary that will be executed and will be offloaded on the device. So our system is modular. And uh, we currently support NVIDIA AMD GPUs. Uh, we support uh, CPUs, multi-core CPUs, uh, x86 and AMD, uh, Intel and AMD. And uh, we support also Intel and Xilinx FPGAs. This is now an example of uh, how the user can uh, use Tornado VM. So how he can specify that this code could be parallelized on the hardware, on a GPU, for example. So this is a class, Compute that uh, has one method, the MXM, that uh, com computes the matrix multiplication of uh, two arrays, A and B, and uh, the result is stored into the C array. So the only way that um, the, com the programmer can uh, parallelize the code with Tornado VM is by using the at parallel annotation, which is an annotation exposed to the programmer in order to indicate that these parallels could be parallelized. So this is a hint, and uh, that's all done with the modification of the method. So with this, Tornado is able to parallelize the loops, apply specializations for the hardware devices, and then execute it and get performance for free. The only other change that we need, the programmer needs to do is uh, to, to, be compatible, to be compliant with the API that we expose. So he needs to create a task schedule, which is a group of tasks. In this particular case, it is S0. And this task schedule will have one task in this example because we have one method, T0, the name of the method, and then the parameters of the method. In our interface for the uh, task schedule, we have the stream out which, uh, in which uh, the user can specify the, the variable that will, be, will have the result of the actual computation. And then we execute. And uh, once it is compiled, then the, the programmer can uh, execute uh, the code on the GPU by just running Tornado and then the class name. Tornado is an alias for Java and all the parameters of uh, the JVM that uh, he uses. Let's have a look now into what is dynamic application reconfiguration, which I think is a very nice feature to have in systems. 
So dynamic application configuration is essentially live task migration. So the tasks, the methods can be dynamically uh, migrated from one device to the other. And this is really cool. Let's have a look into the system, how our framework is built in order to support this uh, functionality. At the top, we have the task schedules, which are the, the groups of methods to be offloaded on the hardware, to be accelerated. Then Tornado forks uh, one thread per device. So for example, for the multi-core CPU, the integrated CPU, the external GPU, or the FPGA, including a thread for the hotspot, which will JIT compile the code in the OpenZDK. So each thread compiles the code if it is not compiled. And when it is compiled, the, the code will be stored in the, the code cache in order to be reused the second time. Then the code is executed, is offloaded on the hardware, and the, 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 then we are waiting to see when it will finish. So we have a barrier at the end in which all the threads are joined. And after doing that, we are able to, to apply some policies that we call them. So with these policies, we are able to decide what do we want to do. Do we want, for example, the first thread that will compile and execute to be the, first, the, the only thread that will execute and then kill all the rest? This is the, the latency policy, uh, policy, which is intended for applications that they, they are very critical for latency. The other one is the end-to-end, -end, which includes time for a compilation and execution. And the other one is peak performance, which is the policy that uh, has only the data transfers in and out and the execution. Let's go to, to see some performance results of this uh, feature of dynamic reconfiguration. So in this figure, we present four systems. Tornado VM is the one that uh, will decide the performance well, where to be migrated, which is the, with the dynamic reconfiguration. Then we have the CPU, the GPU, and the FPGA. So in this figure, we have two benchmarks two applications, one is the DFT, and the, the second one is the Embody, and uh, we compare two different policies, the end-to-end -end that has the JIT compilation included in the time, and the peak performance, which is the execution and data transfers. The interesting part to see from these results is that um, for small data sizes, for, well, let me first to explain the axis. So uh, the, uh, the x-axis has the data sizes, and the y-axis is the performance against the hotspot. So we start and we see that for small data sizes, the performance is uh, ideal, is the big performance can be achieved into hotspot. So it doesn't make sense to get the data, copy them out through PCI Express to the device, and execute small computation because the data are not significant large, significantly large. As long as the data sizes increase, we can see that uh, the, the execution you know, the GPU or the FPGA, it can be significantly higher than hotspot. Then it makes sense to migrate the execution there. Another, another interesting fact is, uh, for example, on the peak performance, we can see that if the GPU was not present, so if the, the pink uh, spots were not present, then the execution for large data sizes would be migrated to FPGAs. And this could be significant because uh, it could give energy savings, significant energy efficiency into the system. The maximum performance that we got is uh, up to 4,500x against the Java sequential code. And that was on the NVIDIA 1060. Let's have a look about uh, how Tornado has been applied in uh, real applications. So. At first, I have to say that uh, Tornado is maintained uh, under the umbrella of uh, European Horizon 2020 project, the E2Data, where, which has uh, as objective to create an end-to-end -end solution for big data frameworks that uh, they want to target heterogeneous uh, computing nodes. This is the example of uh, accelerating Apache Flink, which is a big data framework. So in this case, the the clients are uh, Java developers that they, oper they create operators in Java. They forward the operators into the job manager and the task manager eventually, who will uh, distribute the operators across the available computing nodes on the system, so into the distributed heterogeneous nodes. Each node can have uh, a GPU, can be configured with different uh, hardware capabilities. And this is the goal uh, of uh, this case. In the second case, it's a machine learning acceleration 
So this use case has been used by has been developed by Exus, which is the coordinator of uh, the to data project. And the, the main problem here is that uh, uh, patients are going to the hospital, they are hospitalized, they are admitted there, and then they are leaving hospitals. But uh, there is a chance that uh, they may be readmitted, depending on the profile, on uh, the disease, the conditions, and other char characteristics, other features. So the idea here is uh, to create a machine learning model which will accurately predict how possible it is for a, a patient to return back to the hospital. So Exus uh, saw that by deploying Tornado VM, they can achieve up to 14 times higher performance mm -hmm. for a data set uh, which, is, uh, which has 2 million patients' uh, <laughs> data. And the, the last case that I want to present is a deep learning acceleration. So in this case, uh, we took DeepNets, which is a, a <laughs> deep learning framework written in Java. DeepNets currently doesn't have support for GPU acceleration, and we know that uh, deep learning has uh, the potential to be parallelized because it has uh, many networks, many neurals, so it can be processed in parallel. I would like to emphasize here that uh, the current available solutions for deep learning, they are using pre-compiled kernels, so static uh, binaries that you can deploy also from TensorFlow, and they, they have bindings for Java, Python. So there's no current framework that can dynamically generate code to the device, for the devices. They are, sti uh, they are stuck with uh, the static uh, compilers. So on the right side, I have an example of uh, how we accelerated uh, a part of DeepTense for the backward <laughs> propag propagation uh, method. So this is the original code of DeepNets. And this is the changes that we did. So we added that parallel annotation. And uh, then we created a task schedule for this particular method, one task. And we specified the input and output of uh, the methods to go to the hardware. So we achieved up to eight times higher performance for large data sets. Let's have a look on the current state of the project and uh, the future directions that we have. So Tornado currently it is available on GitHub. It is open sourced. So feel free to go to try our examples, to go through the documentation. Uh, um, we have also Docker images available for NVIDIA GPUs and integrated GPUs. I would like to emphasize also that we have tested with uh, any ID, so you can debug the code for uh, instead of going through um, the vendor tools, you can use the IDE in order to debug your code in Java instead of using the hardware debuggers and all this painful procedure uh, to develop for FPGAs, for example. So what's next? In the current uh, work, in our work in progress, we were becoming compatible with OpenGDK 11. We are doing uh, optimizations for uh, FPGA and GPU execution. Uh, we currently run on uh, AWS instances that they have uh, CPUs, GPUs, and FPGAs. And uh, we're working also on uh, NVIDIA PTX uh, uh, on a CUDA backend. This is our team composed of uh, academics, staff, and uh, PhD students. And of course, we are looking for collaborations. So feel free to give us feedback, uh, to talk to us. I'm here with Florin, my colleague. So we would be glad to have a, a discussion about our project and feedback. And uh, here as takeaways, I would like just to emphasize that uh, our work is not meant to replace Hotspot. We just want to emphasize that uh, the hardware capabilities exist on the hardware, so we may want to leverage for large data sets, so it may be worth to, to offload a, a part of our program on the FPGA, another part on the GPU, etc. So thanks for your attention. We would be glad to discuss about our project and get some ideas and feedback. So thank you very much. Any questions? We've got two minutes. Uh, sorry. <laughs> All right, you. All right, so 
Sorry. Um, so you basically schedule the algorithm to uh, one of the hardware um, uh, stacks that you have, right? Yes. Um, we, we don't only schedule, we create the code. So you create the code? Yes. So suppose you, so, so my question would be, uh, what kind of workloads have you tested this on? Because suppose there's something, there's multiple algorithms in parallel, what, which one would you optimize? Or which one would you run? How, how do how would you solve such a problem? It depends on the characteristics of the application. So it's not a fixed so, uh, solution. So for example, it's not a specific answer that this will go there. Yeah. So GPUs are not intended for uh, pipeline executions, where FPGA can uh, give you more performance improvements there. So I think it's a trade-off. Depends on the characteristics of the applications. So at first we profile the code, and then we analyze it. Hey, thank you. One more question, very quick one. Um, you said you were using the Graal compiler to JIT compile. Were you using Truffle to feed the, your bytecode into that, or were you feeding it directly? Good question. So so far, we don't do that. But this is in, a, in the future work, in our plans to do that, in order to become compatible with uh, truff, any Truffle language. Thank you very much. Thank you.